The next Starship victim rolled out to the pad. SpaceX launched the government's super secret spy satellite. We've got more missions coming in January, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin. Kevin! And welcome to the short holiday special episode of SpaceX in the News. Yesterday, SpaceX released a recap video of Starship serial number 8's 12 and a half click flight from some new angles and vantage points, and some in slow-mo, producing that dramatic effect that will give anyone with a pulse a reason to keep their pulse pulsing. I'm feeling... And just check out this panoramic shot. Goosebumps. Ending with an explosion to literally knock your socks off. The pad has since been mostly cleared of debris. The next starship to land on it or crater into it will be SN9. After its Leaning Tower of Pisa impression, the damaged canard fin was replaced with a transplant donated from SN10's nose cone. Then just a couple days ago, SN9 was transported down Highway 4 to SpaceX's second launch pad. So Merry Christmas, rocket nerds. Santa delivered early this year. Merry Christmas. I like Santa. Yeah. Elon says both pads will be utilized at the same time by two different starships very soon. Can we just take a minute and appreciate how fast the pace is going with production? I mean, I'm curious if SpaceX employees have to attend Magic Camp because they're making things disappear and reappear at a sorcerer's level. After all, Elon does say engineering is magic made real. <gasps> oh. Only minor changes needed to be made to account for the lack of header tank pressure for future flights. So if all goes well, as before, Starship should nail the landing on this next attempt. When that will be is not certain at the moment. SpaceX will first be putting SN9 through the normal stress test prior to liftoff. And I'm guessing it will probably be another 12 and a half click repeat, maybe a couple weeks into January if everything checks out. But even though steel isn't flying through the air, whether intentionally or unintentionally, doesn't mean progress isn't being made. Teams are now working on eight additional Starship prototypes, as well as the Super Heavy Booster number one, BN1. Most of its hull rings are stacked into segments and soon enough will be joined together vertically. However, the boss says it will be a few months before you see that steel statue fly. Yeah, statue. Before the super heavy booster can be tested, the FAA must first complete a new environmental assessment of the Boca Chica area, since SpaceX is only authorized to perform Starship activities with their current license. The government agency sent out a letter to the public requesting comments concerning the scope of issues they should analyze for their assessment. And this is a big deal. If Boca Chica wants to remain the gateway to Mars, SpaceX will need this new license. Clark, that's the gift that keeps on giving the whole year. Let's move on and debrief this week's Enroll 108 mission. On Saturday, SpaceX launched the US government's new spy satellite into orbit, successfully completing their last launch of 2020. What was really special about this mission, however, was the ground tracking of the booster and its subsequent coastal landing. Coming in hot, like Harry with his hair on fire. We don't get a chance to see this that often, but when we do, it provides us a clear and inspiring view of that SpaceX magic in action. Next up, we have the Falcon 9 launch of TurkSat 5A on January 4th. We also have a Starlink launch early next month, and SpaceX's first dedicated rideshare mission will be lifting off with 30 small satellites as well. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. <laughs> The first commercial airlock that was taken up to the space station on SpaceX's last Dragon mission, CRS-21, has been birthed to the ISS. NanoRacks, a Houston-based aerospace company, built the airlock, named Bishop, to deploy payloads like experiments and satellites up to the size of a refrigerator from the station. It also allows payloads to be attached to its exterior, which can be used to store tools during spacewalks. There are three other airlocks currently in operation, but two are for astronauts going out and coming in on EVAs, and the other is built by Japan and can only handle payloads up to the size of a microwave. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you, eccentric members and patrons, for supporting the channel. Everyone, be sure to have a Merry Christmas and a Nerminal New Year. And until 2021, Godspeed.